Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great guest here, Remy Koch, Senior Vice President, Cloud Application Solutions at Siemens Digital Industry Software. Raymond, thanks for remoting in with theCUBE virtual all the way from the Netherlands. Great to see you. We're in Palo Alto, California. Great to see you. All right, thanks for having me. Love, love the international culture of the vibe with virtual, one of the benefits of having remote. Wish we were in person, uh, but soon the pandemic's coming around the corner, but great to see you. Let's get started. Let's get into the digital industry software group that you're involved in, your relationship with Red Hat. But first, let's start with, um, if you could take a minute to give us a brief overview of Siemens and your role there. Yeah, so first of all, um, let me talk a little bit about Siemens because Siemens is obviously a big company. Um, so, <clears throat> as you already announced, I'm part of uh, Siemens Digital Industries software. So Digital Industries is actually the, the division at Siemens that is really focused on how to help companies to become a digital enterprise. And so as part of this IoT, so Industrial Internet of Things is obviously an important element of that. And so if you look at my role at Siemens is really to be uh, the business lead for the cloud part of IoT. And so what I mean with that is specifically a product line called Mindsphere. And so um, Siemens, um, like I said, is looking then at the overall digital transformation of our uh, customers, uh, uh, really product landscape, but also um, how we can support them with new technologies. And IoT is very much part of that. You know, I love one of the benefits of doing the CUBE interviews over the years and, and having the team that we have in the media side, we get to see things early. Industrial IoT, we've been blogging about and reporting for a couple of years now. Now it's hot because with the pandemic, it's, you still need things to run. And yeah. so industrial IoT, notwithstanding, there's still, you know, the other edges like consumer edge and other devices, but industrial IoT is getting all the focus because of security and also because of just critical operations, critical infrastructure of, for business and you know, and public sector, private sector, everything. This is a huge area. Could you talk about your strategy around industrial IoT and specifically how you guys are using this analytics mind sphere, as you mentioned? What is that about? How does that help me if I'm a manufacturing organization? Yeah, so first of all, maybe it's good to clarify what, uh, <clears throat> what we mean with uh, industrial IoT, because there's IoT and there's industrial IoT. So when people typically talk about industrial IoT, um, it's really three main areas. It's a uh, smart grid, so really around uh, IoT for, for energy management and energy usage. There is uh, smart cities. So this is really IoT for smart buildings, but also any kind of infrastructure that goes with, uh, uh, that goes with smart cities. Um, and then the last one is uh, smart factories. And so we typically, when we say industrial IoT, we have clients that cover the three main areas that I just mentioned. And so really what it is about is to take advantage of data, right? So IoT um, is really about <clears throat> how you take advantage of data and how do you actually um, get insights from this data to run your business better? So maybe to give a, a specific example, uh, if you look at uh, uh, one of our uh, major, uh, major customers, like for example, uh, Coke uh, Hellenic, uh, they just actually presented at Hanover Messe uh, last week. Um, they are trying to use IoT to advance uh, how they actually operate the bottling of uh, uh, the bottling lines of uh, of their uh, of their factories, and so it's really about operational excellence. So meaning how to uh, get more throughput, uh, how to get more efficiency into how they do production. But in many cases, uh, John, it's also about energy management because data is not just about um, okay, operational uh, uh, excellence, but also surrounding topics like how can I better preserve energy uh, as I produce something? And so, yeah, so in many cases, IoT is all about data, getting next levels of insight from the data and then put that to a particular use. So this can be enhancing the quality of production, uh, getting uh, better performance of your equipment, uh, getting a better uh, use of your equipment when it comes to energy consumption. So there are many use cases typically <laughs> related to industrial IoT. Yeah, I mean, I, and you got to love the industrial definition to the way you laid it out. That's critical infrastructure and emerging infrastructure and, and plant and equipment, all those things. Right. But it's also a proxy for an, an intel sign for business. 
So this kind of brings me to the kind of connecting the dots, if you don't mind, I'll jump to the convergence question um, that yeah. I'd love to bring up, which is, you know, the convergence of IT information technology and operational technology, OT, you know, which has been right. discussed before, but you talk about culture clashes, different cultures, you know, also right. systems are different, you know, purpose built potentially on one side, uh, but they got to come together. Okay, these are both very important software pieces to the puzzle on the platform. How do you see that evolving? What's your take on resolving this dilemma of the priorities of innovation and security and uh, openness? <laughs> What's your yeah. take on this? this no, no it's, a, it's a good topic, uh, John, because the reality is that um, OT has to it and and IT has to ot I guess. Um, <laughs> when we talk about IoT, right? And um, so I think that's why at Siemens, we, we, we have kind of a unique uh, viewpoint because uh, Siemens uh, looks at both the OT side of the world through, for example, in the context of uh, uh, discrete and process uh, uh, industries, uh, look at the automation part of it. So meaning the actual operational automation and then obviously all the equipment that comes with it, um, which is really typically an OT conversation then if you look at my business unit, so Siemens Digital Industry Software, we look at it really from an IT point of view. And so how can we help these customers to become a digital enterprise? And so at Siemens, we're kind of bringing these two views together. And then to your point, we're trying to make the integration as, as seamless as possible. And um, to your point, actually, it, it includes also making sure that we actually drive the standards uh, that are going to make this enable, uh, or that are going to make this uh, possible, um, can be open standards like uh, OPC uh, UA, uh, for example, when you look at discrete manufacturing, uh, but can also be standardizing on certain technologies, right? And so, uh, what we're seeing is that, uh, for example, back to why we're talking is uh, really Kubernetes and and kind of the container technology that is out there. Um, standard technology is helping this conversation as well. Yeah, I mean, the integration piece, that's the Kubernetes containers and, and uh, microservices, these are bringing cloud native integration points. Uh, and that's really going to be key. I, we're gonna, I want to get that in a second, but I want to come back to the MindSphere analytics piece because data is critical, as you mentioned. So integration, data, right. security, and observability means security, monitoring, all these things are evolving. You guys earlier this year announced um, you're expanding this Mindshare reach in partnership with IBM and Red Hat. Um, so consumers could run on-prem on and cloud. That's the topic of this event. Main, the main theme at Red Hat Summit this year is clearly hybrid cloud in a distributed kind of computing paradigm, which we all love. I mean, who's, this is what we're talking about here. We're talking about distributed computing, edge, core, cloud. Why is this important for Siemens and your customers? Why did you decide to work with IBM and Red Hat on this initiative? Yeah, it, it kind of was already somewhat in your question, meaning that uh, if, if we work with uh, with our customers, uh, really the cloud conversation that we have with them is a, is a hybrid cloud conversation. And what, what we mean with that is, yes, there are elements of public clouds, um, but especially when you talk about critical factory operations, uh, many of these workloads that we're talking about are actually very close to the shop floor or are at least somewhat near. And therefore any kind of large enterprise OEM that we work with, um, so whether it's uh, uh, whether it's an automotive OEM, whether it's an aerospace uh, and defense OEM, they all have a hybrid cloud strategy. And so what is interesting about IoT is that this is where hybrid cloud kind of comes together. It kind of goes back to your previous question about IT and OT coming together. As you can imagine, OT has always been very on-premise because it's near real time critical factory operations. IT obviously much more comfortable with uh, public cloud. So we're, we're trying to bring this together and therefore many of these conversations that we have with uh, large enterprise OEMs is really a hybrid cloud conversation. So specifically what we're doing here together with Red Hat is to enable exactly that. So meaning that we can take MindSphere, our solution for IoT analytics, we can bring that not just to uh, a public cloud uh, or, or make that available as a public cloud solution, but also on-premise private cloud. And I think, I think it's very interesting because um, it, it, it opens a conversation 
that that um, that allows people to really now start talking about value as opposed to being worried about okay where is my data going is it secure is it actually gonna uh, be available when I need it for factory operations so yeah I'm pretty excited about this work that we're doing together uh, because again it's about value making sure that uh, customers actually can fit what we do at Siemens into a landscape that they uh, that they feel comfortable with it feels to me I may be a little bit old school but I feel like this is the innovation that we saw in the 80s and 90s as networks got more expansive and inter-networking happened and you know you start to see that lifeblood of the action and the value get enabled and I think um, your point about hybrid and operating around the environment is critical because this brings up new challenges and new opportunities for instance you know you don't need to bolt on a caching layer to manage a slow database <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, you, yeah, you can exactly. get real time and you can get, you know, um, better performance and compute. You don't need to move the data around. So, you know, being, bringing um, compute and resource and, and scale to these edges when they need it focuses more on the solution architect, less on putting point technologies in place to solve. Yeah, and what is, yeah, exactly. And maybe to chime in on that, I think what is also interesting is that, that is that it allows the customers to optimize where to best place the workloads that they care about. And so maybe to make that a bit more specific, if you think about a use case like energy management. So let's say that I have a production line, 1500 assets that are consuming energy. Um, if you then think about uh, the data that is involved in analytics, you can imagine that if I start sending all this data to public cloud, maybe, maybe not the most efficient setup because uh, a first level of uh, filtering and analytics, I, I can very much do close to, um, I can very much close do uh, or cl uh, do that close to uh, to the equipment. And then um, when I get to aggregation of data uh, and some further filtering to figure out, okay, what is really happening at a line level? What is really happening at a particular production area level? Again, I think you can do that prior to actually sending some of this data to the cloud meaning public cloud. Where the public cloud becomes interesting is when you want to aggregate, for example, across multiple uh, uh, manufacturing facilities. Now you want to look at KPIs of one factory versus another. You want to aggregate across multiple factories. You want to figure out, okay, why are, why are certain trends happening just in this factory and it's better in this one? So I think that's why what we're seeing with clients is that they're expecting from us a layered architecture. And to your point, um, the most efficient way of, of actually dealing with their use cases across yeah, the, the infrastructure that is available to them. So yeah, if you look at Siemens, we're trying to kind of carefully think about all these layers from field to edge, to on-premise private cloud, to public cloud, and then make sure that along the way, each layer has value and that it's there for a purpose and, and for, a, for a real reason, right? Not just for the sake of having it. Yeah, or being um, limited by the architecture that you're stuck with, constrained yeah, by the right. architecture, by what the solutions are. You're saying the, the, the script is flipped upside down where you can optimize your business, which by the way, will throw off more data to evaluate. So there's a new post analysis mode of post configuration, and you could align your resources best way you see fit to maximize your business model. I mean, this is the beautiful thing about this distributed edge concept is the software enablement of the business <laughs> is there. So the data is critical. So, you know, as more control data comes in, it's not just set it up and watch it run. Yeah, there's automation involved in a lot of software, but you got, you get new data coming in. If you have this new observation space of new horizontally scalable data, yeah. this new data coming yeah, exactly. in. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think, uh, I think you said a key point there. It's. Uh, um, we don't want our architecture to constrain, um, I guess, what kind of value the, cu the customer can actually get out of these use cases. And therefore, I, I think it's kind of exciting that in this ecosystem, uh, especially also the interplay between uh, Red Hat and Siemens, that we, 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 we kind of take it one step further and think about, okay, what is actually truly the most optimal way for customers to go do this? And that we've, we form these kind of partnerships to, um, yeah, to, to really help the customer even take a, another step forward. So uh, I think it's pretty pretty nice. Well, Raymond, I really appreciate it. That's a masterclass uh, commentary, nice gems you're dropping here on theCUBE, appreciate it. 
you know, I, the way I look at it, I'd love to get your final reaction to kind of the world we're living in. Just my, my take on it is that you, we have a new operating system of business. And what you're, we're kind of getting at is, is that you guys now can have an operating model for your customers. It's software. It's not just an yeah, OS for yeah, a server, exactly. the server's the business. <laughs> it's the world now. What's yeah, exactly. And um, I think from my point of view, I think it's exciting to see us again in, in this world of, of, of complex technology, always find new, um, always to find new ways to uh, help the customer to kind of advance their use cases, right? Because the imperatives at, uh, for example, discrete manufacturing, they didn't really change. I mean, they're, they, they've been there for, <laughs> for many, many years. And I think for us to be able to bring our technology closer together and then solve kind of these, these use cases in an even more efficient way, I think I think it's pretty interesting. And um, yeah, so I see good things and I think ultimately IoT, um, I think those that can actually bring real value are going to be able to deal like we just talked about the hybrid scenarios, um, but they're also going to, uh, the people that are going to matter is the, the people that can bring the most insights out of this data, right? Because what I always say about IoT is, it's yet more messy data. So it's only worth actually collecting all this data if you actually get next levels and new levels of insight from it. And I think, yeah, it has to kind of fit uh, that kind of a mantra. And I think yeah. together, yeah, we're really trying to figure that out. So yeah, pretty I know, exciting. I know some people as well would agree, well, agree with that statement. I, told, I do as well, but other, the other side of that uh, equation is if you don't architect the edge properly or the IOT edge, the data cost could be compelling. <laughs> You could get, you could get uh, hit with some charges because you, most people have been burned by the, you know, the idea of moving data around, versus say moving compute. So, you know, back to this value of where's the edge? What are you optimizing for? That's kind of the big question. What do you, what, how do you react to that when someone says, Raymond, what should I be optimizing for as I lay out my architecture for the core to edge, data center, cloud edge scenario? What's, uh, what am I optimizing for? Yeah, I think. Um you kind of work backwards from what you're trying to achieve. I think um, it may sound kind of obvious, but um, quite often I get in uh, in discussions with customers where we first start talking technology. Obviously it's exciting. I'm kind of a techie myself. So it's exciting to, about, to talk about technology, but they forget to start from, okay, what's the return of invest and what's the use case, right? And, and, and so how, how do we, I mean, what are we trying to solve who is trying to benefit from it and what benefit are they looking for? And then if you carefully work backwards from there, you will actually see that, as we just talked about, the data and insights into data are, are in many cases leading some elements of the value that a particular person is looking for. And then working backwards from there, you will actually figure out that back to the layer discussion that we just had, this data has to, doesn't have to be available at every level, right? I mean, every layer, adds some value. And so therefore you have to have kind of an open discussion and that's meaning an open discussion about what layers to uh, uh, to use. And that's why at Siemens, we, we kind of follow that approach. So meaning that we work backwards from the use case, then we think about, okay, what what is, what is most appropriate at the field and control level? Then what to your point is the most appropriate at the edge level? Then what is the most appropriate at the cloud level? And then from there, you actually figure out, okay, how do I actually, uh, uh, where, where do I deploy? What kind of acquisition of data? Uh, what kind of insights am I interested in at that level? And then basically what kind of machine learning am I going to deploy there? And then work work all the way from there. And it seems to work, you know? And that's why to your point, it's all about making sure that at every level data is there for a reason and you process it for a reason because otherwise it's just technology. It's interesting still, but it doesn't, that doesn't have any value, right? Awesome, Raymond, great insight there. I mean, this is all about engineering. You guys are doing a great job, you know, engineering the solutions. This is DevOps, DevSecOps, it's the hybrid cloud, um, really bringing those, that value to the edge, industrial edge. Congratulations for all the great work. Raymond Cook, Senior Vice President, Cloud Application Solutions at Siemens Digital Industry Software. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Okay, yeah, thanks for having me. Okay. Thank you. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, uh, Red Hat Summit 2021 virtual. Thanks for watching.